So it's been more than a year since the Youth Mobility Scheme for India was announced. And here's the thing, it was such a brilliant visa because it allowed you to move to the UK without a visa, without needing a job or a sponsor and live and work in the UK. That's quite literally the dream, right? And then there was silence. Indians checked the news, they checked Twitter, they asked YouTubers, they asked pretty much everyone under the sun, but no one had any idea when it would go live. And there was just a lot, a lot of chaos around this. And then finally, finally, a date was announced. Hey guys, so the youth mobility scheme for India has been nothing short of a Bollywood movie filled with twists and turns and eerie silence. But as of a few days ago, there was finally an announcement on the date which was put uh, forth by all of the news channels and even the High Commission which tweeted about this. So finally, there is a green light. Indians will now be able to travel to the UK as a part of the Young Professional Scheme and live and work in the UK. So for the folks who've just joined us and who don't really know what the Youth Mobility Scheme is or the Young Professional Scheme is, it basically is a scheme between the UK and India in this case, which allows young professionals who are basically between 18 and 30 years to move to the UK and live and work in the UK without a job, without a sponsor. So for quite literally everyone who's been asking me how they can move to the UK, this is your opportunity. This is your golden ticket. Now, there are limited slots because there are obviously more people who want to move to the UK than people that the UK can actually manage. So the number of slots or the ballot has been limited to 3,000 places, which is pretty good because it's more than most of the other countries, with the exception of Australia and Canada, which has like 6,000. But it's still a pretty good number. Now, since it's the Young Professional Schemes, one of the criteria mentions that you cannot have young children under the age of 18 years or children that are dependent on you financially and you yourself must be between 18 and 30 years. So the governments of UK and India decided that the cutoff age for being young is basically 30. So I guess it's a good thing I'm 20. I mean, all the skincare products are finally paying off. Now, apart from this, the other thing that you would need is enough money in your bank account, £2,530 to be precise, or approximately 2.5 lakhs, to show the UK government that you can support yourself financially while you are in the UK. But something else you should know is that while you are in the UK, while you don't have access to public funds, you will still be eligible to use the NHS because you will be paying an NHS surcharge while you make your visa application. As a part of your application, you will also be asked to submit a TB test to ensure that you don't have TB. And one more important thing, while you're on this visa, you are allowed to stay in the UK for up to two years and this visa cannot be extended. Of course, you can switch to different types of visas apart from this visa, but this also means that this visa is not a pathway to an ILR or a permanent residency. So the two years that you spend in the UK as a part of this visa will not be counted if you decide to apply for an ILR at a later point in time. Because, like you know, if you have to apply for an ILR or a PR equivalent in the UK, you have to be in the UK for continuously five years. Now, while you are on this visa in the UK, you will be allowed to study, you will be allowed to work as long as you're not a professional sports person or a coach. And there are some more criteria. The total value of the business equipment you use should not be more than £5,000. There shouldn't be any premises you own other than the house that you're living in and operating your business from. And you should not have any employees. All right, so here's what you absolutely need to know. The date the Young Professional Scheme is supposed to go live is slated to be the 28th of February 2023 as confirmed by the Economics Times and the statement put out. Now, at the time of making this video, the official information on gov.uk hasn't changed yet, but we do really expect it to change over the next few days, because if you go to the gov.uk website right now, it still has the old information which says the ballot is not open for India. So we do expect the link to be updated as well, because even if you see the link right now, they've quite specifically said that the Indians should not use this link since the ballot is not open. So over the next few days, this information should get updated. Okay, so let's talk about how you can apply. On the 20th of Feb, you should be able to visit the gov.uk website and click on the link and apply for the ballot from there. If you get selected to apply, you will be allowed to apply as long as you meet all of the criteria. After you get the invitation, you will have to apply within the time frame that has been mentioned on your invitation. You'll also have to provide the unique number for that invitation to apply. Now, apart from this, you will also have to provide a lo local police certificate or a local police clearance certificate 
while stating that you're of good character, and this shouldn't be issued more than six months before the date from when you apply. Another thing, in order to be eligible, you will have to prove that you have an RFQ level six and above, which is basically a graduate level and above, and you will have to prove documents, provide documents showing that you have actually cleared that, and a letter from your college saying that you've, well, attended the course and passed the course and cleared all of it. So that's something you will require as well, so keep that in handy. Now, when it boils down to how much it costs, the application fee is £259 per person, and you will have to pay a health surcharge of approximately £470, but of course you need to check how much exactly it would be for you, so I will leave a link in the description below, so you can find out exactly how much you'll have to pay as your health surcharge. If you aren't aware, your health surcharge is what helps you get access to the NHS in the UK, or the National Health System, which basically gets you access to doctors. Apart from this, you would also need to have £2,530 in your bank account, like I just mentioned, as your savings. Now, since time is limited, I would very, very strongly suggest you do as much reading up on this as possible because, well, you have quite literally just a month left and you need to get all your documents in place, all your paperwork in place. And apart from that, I think it's really important that you understand what you're getting into. So all the information isn't in one place, unfortunately, on gov.uk. So there are a couple of links, which I will link in the description below. One of them is the appendix, which has a lot of detailed information on this particular scheme. So do remember to check all of it out and read all of the fine print. If you still have a question beyond all of that, of course, you can drop me a message in the comment section below and I will try and help out. Now, here's the thing. When you finally move to the UK, you are going to be wanting to look for ways to make a little more money on the side. Well, you're in luck because I've already covered all of that. So if you'd like to know any more about that, watch this.